Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to a brand new video. And in this video, I'm going to show you 30 hidden features of the Galaxy Note 9. So let's go ahead and begin the video. So the first hidden feature I will show you guys is how to speed these animations up. And these animations appear whenever you are launching an app or navigating through the phone's menu. Basically, we want to speed this up so that the phone feels a little bit more responsive. So first, we'll need to enable developer mode. To enable developer mode, you'll need to go to settings, scroll all the way down, tap on about phone, then tap on software information, repeatedly tap on build number. The phone will ask you for a pin if you have a pin unlock system set up. And then developer mode has been enabled. Go back, go back once again and scroll down and you will see developer options here. And once you're inside here, scroll down and look for these three options, Windows Animation Scale, Transition Animation Scale, Animator Duration Scale. Now we want to speed this up so decrease it to 0 0.5 or 0.5. And now you'll feel that the phone is far more responsive than before. You see how fast it is? The animations are almost instant and the phone wastes absolutely no time in switching between apps. And if you set a higher value, the animations will become slower. So if I set a higher value, say 2x like this, you'll see animations are now slowed down. Alright, so this is where I went wrong in my previous upload of this video. So I thought I'll correct it and upload it again. So in case you disable developer options, these settings will be reset to 1x. So these and window animation scale, transition animation scale and animation duration scale all will be reset to 1x. So in case you want to keep your settings, you'll need to keep the developer options on. If you want to select multiple images in the gallery, usually what you will do is go to your gallery and then select multiple images like this. But there's a little hidden feature available that allows you to select multiple images much more easier. So I'm just going to zoom out. Uh, it also works while you're zoomed in. But to demonstrate, I'm going to zoom out. Just long press an image and then do this to select multiple images. Now I'm going to pause here. I'm going to resume it like this like this and this makes your work a lot easier instead of going and selecting images individually like this you can just swipe your finger like this to select multiple images now if you want to deselect just do the opposite and that's it it's very very easy to use now if you're like me and you keep your phone upside down you might not be able to see incoming call on the screen and I also tend to keep my phone on silent so there is no way I can see if there is any call or if there is any notification on the phone. Fortunately we have a feature like this which allows you to flash the LED light to alert you that there is an incoming call or if there is an incoming message. So to enable this little feature you'll need to head over to settings, scroll down here and tap on accessibility then tap on hearing and then tap on flash notifications. It's better deep inside the phone. So just turn on camera light and that's it. That's all you need to do. Now the second option here uses the screen to alert you but you already get in full screen notification whenever you get a call so I don't really see myself using the second option. And the LED light is actually quite bright. It lights up the entire area. If you have difficulties reading the font on the Galaxy Note 9, you have an option called high contrast font. So to turn on high contrast font, just tap on the gear icon, go to settings and then scroll down here, tap on accessibility, then tap on vision and turn this option on which says high contrast fonts. Now take a look at this uh, text below high contrast fonts. It's a little bit less dark compared to the other text. Now once you turn this on, you can see this text also becomes dark and this should make the fonts a little bit more legible. So check this out guys, negative colors looks absolutely insane and it's system wide so it should be negative colors even in the camera. So if you want to enable this option, go back to settings and go back to accessibility, then tap on vision, scroll down here and you'll see an option called negative colors. So if, you're turn, if I turn this off, you can see everything is back to normal. But once I turn it on, it kind of <laughs> makes everything look funky. If the negative colors do not satisfy you, take a look at this. This is in grayscale. So everything is grayscale across the full Android system. So there are absolutely no colors at all. And I think camera, 
yes everything is black and white in the camera but if you take a picture it will take picture in full color so once again if you want to enable this option go back to accessibility settings tag for accessibility go to vision scroll all the way down and tap on color adjustment and here turn on color adjustment and select grayscale and if you see the options that are available below grayscale we have pro tan dew tan tri tan and these are accessibility options for someone whose vision is impaired who's not able to see perfect colors so i think it's a it is really nice that samsung is providing all of these different options for uh, accessibility but these aren't the only options available if you go back here we also have color lens and if you turn this on you can see it just adds a layer of color to the entire screen so we have blue and you can also change the opacity and we have all these different colors in case you are having difficulties in in looking at the screen and thumbs up to Samsung for providing all of these different accessibility settings. It is recommended that you restart your phone every once in a while to prevent any slowdowns and to prevent any unforeseen problems. Now fortunately you can have the Galaxy phone do that for you. Now there is an option called auto restart. To access auto restart option you need to go to settings, tap on device maintenance, tap these three dots and select the auto restart option. Now auto restart option restarts your phone automatically once a week. So just turn it on, then you have to select the time and the day when you want the phone to restart. Now I prefer having my phone restart every Monday. So every Monday morning, so before I wake up, so 4 a.m. Monday morning, the phone will automatically restart and will be ready to go on Monday morning. Now we all know that fast charging a phone can generate quite a bit of heat. And if you live in a tropical country where the ambient temperature is very high, the phone will get very hot during charging especially when the fast charging option is enabled. So fortunately, we have an option to disable fast charging. We can disable both fast wired charging and fast wireless charging on the Galaxy Note 9. So let me show you how you can do this. So go to settings, tap on device maintenance, tap on this battery icon, and then tap these three dots, and then tap on advanced settings. Here you have two options, fast cable charging and fast wireless charging. If you want to disable this, just turn it off. And now the phone will charge slowly and this will generate a lot less heat. Very useful if you live in a country where the ambient temperature is high or if you're charging your phone inside your car. If you notice that your battery is draining a little bit faster than usual, then you should probably go ahead and put apps to sleep forcefully because if the apps are running in the background, they are going to drain a lot of battery power. So I'm going to show you how to forcefully put apps to sleep on the Note 9. So first go to settings, tap on device maintenance then tap on battery and if you scroll down here we have an option called always sleeping apps and what this does is when you add apps to this list these apps will never ever run in the background even when the phone is operating normally and it also says you will not receive any notifications from these apps because they are sleeping and you can see I have quite a few apps here including Amazon Prime and this is one way I am able to achieve good battery life with the Note 9 and if you want you can add more apps here just tap on add apps and you can add apps from this list but beware guys once you add an app to this always sleeping apps list you will not receive any notifications from that app because the apps will, app will be asleep and this little window here shows you what apps are consuming power just tap on save power in order to kill these apps now these apps are also put to sleep and there are no apps running in the background at the moment and very quickly we have some power saving features if you tap on mid power saving features it will disable background data it will limit the cpu speed it will decrease the brightness but the screen resolution will stay on to the maximum which is wqhd plus but if you turn on the maximum power saving mode this will also apply a high contrast theme let me show you how so there you go you can see everything has become dark screen resolution has decreased CPU speed limiter has been turned on, always on display is off, background network usage is off and these are all the options we get in the high power saving mode. So you can see very few settings are available and I wonder if you can use the camera. So yes you can in fact use the camera in the high power saving mode but you can see most of the options here are disabled. So I think you should use this feature when you're low on battery power in order to extend your battery life. And if you want to turn this off, now maximum power saving mode will be turned off and the phone will return to normal.
If you want to clear the cache of an application, you probably have to go to settings, then tap on apps, search for the apps, and then clear the cache. But actually, there's a very, very easy way of doing this. Now, let me demonstrate this. For example, I'm browsing on Instagram, and I want to clear the cache of Instagram because the application is not responding properly. So just press this recent key, and then press on the Instagram logo or any logo of an app which you want to clear the cache. Just press and hold on the logo and you'll get this little eye icon. Tap on the eye icon and here you can force stop the app or you can clear the cache. So for example, go to storage, then tap on clear cache. And then we can also force stop. So now we can go back to home and when I launch Instagram now, it's going to rebuild that entire cache and it's going to start the application from scratch. Now guys, picture yourself in a situation where you're having a party at your home and you're streaming songs from your phone onto a Bluetooth audio device, say for example Bluetooth speakers or a home theater system or a hi-fi audio system. Now a friend comes up to you and asks you to play a YouTube video or they ask you to play a video from your gallery. Now as soon as you play a video from your gallery or from YouTube, you can see the music will stop. So just as a demonstration. If I play this video, the sound from this video starts playing onto the Bluetooth audio system. Fortunately, we have a hidden feature on the Note 9 which allows you to continue on streaming Bluetooth audio uninterrupted. So the music app can continue on playing songs onto your Bluetooth speaker uninterrupted. Meanwhile, you can show your friends whatever you want. Say you want to play a YouTube video, you can play a YouTube video but the sound from the YouTube video will not be played on the external speakers. Instead, it will be played on the phone's internal speaker. Let me show you how. Now this feature is called separate app sound. For this, you'll need to go to settings, tap on sounds and vibration, scroll all the way down and tap on this option called separate app sound. Now this feature is also on the Galaxy S9 Plus if you remember my hidden feature video for that phone. But at that time, this feature was not integrated into the phone. We were required to download a separate app called Sound Assistant. But now in the later software updates, Samsung has completely integrated this feature into the Note 9 and the S9 Plus. So just turn this feature on. Now scroll down here and select the application which you want to stream songs to your Bluetooth device uninterrupted. So I want Samsung Music to be uninterrupted while I do other stuff on my phone. And then in audio device, make sure you have the Bluetooth speakers connected. For example, I have the Sony SRS XB20 Bluetooth speakers already connected. And that's all you need to do. It's very, very easy. So now if I go back here to the audio player, and if I go back to the gallery, now I can go ahead and play the video uninterrupted. And the video sound will actually play on the phone. And I think to better demonstrate this, let me just launch YouTube. Now you can see the audio coming from YouTube is playing on the phone and the audio coming from the Samsung Music Player is playing on the external Bluetooth speaker. In short, if money is not an issue and if you want the ultimate Now if you want to control the sound on the Bluetooth speaker, just press this button and it will show you media volume. And now you can show off your videos to your friends without interrupting the music which is also playing on your phone. This next hidden feature will allow you to stream audio from your phone onto two different Bluetooth devices at the same time. So this feature is called Bluetooth Dual Audio and one usage scenario for this might be if you have a friend who's also got a Bluetooth headset, you both want to listen to the same song simultaneously, you can do that by this feature. So to use this feature, first you'll need to go to Bluetooth and pair the two different devices which you want to stream audio to. Now I've got two different devices paired, for example I've got this little headset, I've paired it with my phone and I've also got these Bluetooth speakers paired and you can see both are connected for call and media audio. And then what you want to do is tap this button here and go to advanced and turn on Bluetooth dual audio. And then turn off media volume sync and then you'll be able to play two songs over two different Bluetooth devices simultaneously. Let me show you. So this is coming from the Bluetooth speaker now let me show you the song which is also playing on these so first it will this will also show you the name of the song increase the volume 
and if I bring these close so you can see the song is also playing on these speakers which are connected to this little headset so this is a cool little feature which will allow two people to enjoy the same song over two different Bluetooth headsets simultaneously. We have this little hidden feature on the Note 9 which allows you to turn the screen on without actually touching the phone. For example, your hands might be dirty, you, you are doing your dishes and you want to check what notifications you have on your phone. So all you have to do is hover your hand over the screen like this and the screen will turn on. And this might be, again, this might be useful if your hands are dirty and if you're preoccupied with something, you can just do this in order to check the notification on your phone. So to enable this feature, let's unlock this. So to enable this feature, you'll need to go to settings, scroll down here to accessibility, and then tap on dexterity and interaction and turn this feature on, which says easy screen turn on. So next time, whenever you want to wake the phone up from sleep, all you need to do is hover your hand over the screen like this and the phone will turn on. As always, Samsung gives you a ton of customizability options. So now let's go ahead and check out some customizability options for the display. Now these are separate from the previous customization options that I showed you. Those were in the accessibility menu, but these ones are in display menu. So first you'll need to go to settings and then tap on display and then go to screen mode. Now here in screen mode, we have four different options, adaptive display, AMOLED cinema, AMOLED photo, and basic. Now if you want 100% accurate colors, you should select the third option which says AMOLED photo. But you can see these options are disabled and some color options are also hidden. So to access those hidden options, you need to select the first option called adaptive display. So here you can set the color temperature of the display, cool, or you can select the warmer colors. Now I do prefer the warmer colors because it just makes the display look more pleasing. So you can also change these individual colors and you can see how it affects the color of the display. Might not be that visible in camera but once again if you want the most accurate colors then select AMOLED photo. If you store extremely sensitive information on your phone you should probably go ahead and enable this feature which will erase your phone in case someone enters the pin incorrectly 15 times. So for that, go to settings, scroll down here to lock screen and tap on secure lock settings. Enter your pin, tap next and enable this option auto factory reset. So now if your phone gets stolen and thieves try to get into your phone, after 15 incorrect attempts, the phone will automatically do a factory reset which will also erase your files and downloaded apps. Very useful if you have some banking apps on your phone, if you store your banking passwords and all that sensitive stuff on your phone. Now in case your phone is not working properly, you might want to access the service menu and test the different functions of the phone. So to access the service menu, tap on the phone button and open up the dialer. Now here, enter star hash zero star and hash. And this will take you to this service menu and here you can test different stuff like you can test different colors on the screen in case there's a dead pixel you'll be able to see it over here and in case there is a screen one it will also show up on the display so we can test different colors you can test the receiver working fine vibration is working fine so you get the idea you have all these different tests in order to test if the phone is working correctly or not you can also test this little LED here so by default whenever you get a call it kind of goes into this full screen mode regardless of any app that you're using now this might be a little bit too intrusive, so we want to change this option. So to make incoming calls a little bit discreet, go to phone, tap on these three dots and go to settings. And here turn on this option called show calls in a pop-up. Now the next time you get a call, even if you're inside an app, the call will appear in a little pop-up over here on the top of the display. Just like this. And this is less intrusive and it's more discreet. But if you want to make it full screen, just tap on this button and it will go into the regular full screen mode. So you want to share a large file with your friends and your family. For example, you recorded a video that's in 4K or in even in 1080p. If a video is long enough, it will not be able to go through apps like WhatsApp. And obviously WhatsApp does degrade the quality. So you want to share the video in A, full high quality. And two, you want to share it as a text. Yes, you can also share a video as a text on this phone. Now we have an option here called link sharing 
and this works for videos, photos and other files also. Now for example, I have this video that is 1 minute 2 second long and I want to share this full high quality video with my friends. Now I'll press the share button and then tap on link sharing. Now link sharing will upload this little video onto Samsung Cloud. That particular link will be active for 24 hours and then you can share that link over text message, over text message on WhatsApp. You can mail the link to whoever you want and then the other person can download the video. So I'm going to upload that video. So I'm just going to send this link over and you can see the phone is uploading the video to Samsung Cloud. So once the upload completes, I can now go ahead and open the file on another phone. And here you can see we have the file in the Samsung Cloud. Now I can go ahead and download this if I want. And you can share this with any number of people. So once the file download completes, you can go ahead and open the file. So let's just open it with the album. And you can see the quality is identical because it is the exact same file that I recorded on the Note 9. So there's absolutely no degradation in quality. So that's one big advantage you have with the link sharing option. Now because the video is on a cloud and you have a little link that you can use to download the video, you have the ability to actually send that link over as a text message. So if you go to the link sharing app, if you tap on the resend button and select the text Done. message option. And that's it. Just send the link over and I should receive it over here. And now if I tap on this little link, I will be able to view the exact same video on the Sony phone. So I can go ahead and download this and the download should start. So once the download finishes, you can go ahead and view the exact same video on your other smartphone. And once again, this is the exact same quality which was on the Note 9. So no difference in quality and you can share the link with just a text message. Awesome feature. I think more people should use this feature because this is one of the most amazing hidden features on the Note 9. And this file on the Samsung Cloud will disappear after 24 hours. Here you can see the expiry date. Samsung phones usually have an inbuilt screen recorder but that screen recorder is only available to games. Fortunately, we can trick that screen recorder into thinking normal apps are games and that allows us to record apps. Now, I don't recommend doing this. I recommend that you go to Play Store and download a proper uh, video recorder like this. I have this DU uh, video recorder and this works fantastic on my phone. But in case you don't want to download third party app, you can use the game launcher to add apps to the games list and tricking the phone into thinking that apps are actually games. So let's go ahead and try this. So first off, head over to settings, tap on advanced features, tap on games and make sure game launcher is turned on. Once you turn on game launcher, go to your main menu and find game launcher over here. Open up game launcher and tap these three icons and tap on add a game. Now add anything which you want to record. Now you can see YouTube and Chrome are not there. So the recording functionality will not be available in YouTube and Chrome. I think these are for copyright purposes. So let's try Instagram. Just tap on add. You can see Instagram will be added to game launcher. This tricks the phone into thinking that Instagram is actually a game. So once you launch Instagram from the game launcher, tap on OK. You'll see this little icon down here. Tap on this icon and this gives you some dedicated gaming tools. Tap on this gear button. And here we have record videos option. Here you can also add your own images through the camera, but I'm going to select none. And you can also select the audio source, be it microphone or record in game sounds. You can also select the resolution at which the game is being recorded. So if you want to record stuff in Instagram, just tap on this button and press the record button. And it shows to stop recording, press the stop button on the navigation bar. So once you press OK, it will now start recording all of the different stuff in Instagram and everything is actually fairly smooth so just long press this and now I'm going to stop the recording and the recording will be saved inside your gallery so if you move over here here we have that little recording and it has also recorded my sound now we all have that mischievous friend who borrows your phone to browse the internet, to watch YouTube videos or to listen to some particular track in your playlist. But instead they'll press the home button and they'll start browsing your gallery, they'll 
open up your chats and WhatsApp and basically your privacy is gone. Fortunately, we have a feature called screen pinning, which will prevent these people from exiting the apps. So if you want to go back to the home screen, the phone will require a pin in case you want to exit the app. But first, before you enable screen pinning, I recommend that you set a pin or a password to unlock your phone. For example, I have my pin here that I use to unlock the phone. Because if your friend knows the way around Android, they can easily exit screen pinning and they'll again start browsing your personal stuff in case you don't have a pin set up. So let me show you how to set up the screen pinning options. First, you'll need to go to settings, tap on biometrics and security, scroll all the way down and tap on other security settings. And here again, scroll all the way down and then select this option called pin windows. Turn this option on. You must make sure that this second option is also turned on which says ask pin before unpinning. And this will require a pin when people try to unpin apps. So now for demonstration purposes, I'm going to launch YouTube. For example, your friend wants to watch a YouTube video. So launch YouTube and then press this recent key. Make sure YouTube is on top and then press this pin icon. And now YouTube is pinned. You can see notification bar is also disabled. The edge bar is also disabled. And then if you press the home button, you can see we will not be able to go back to the home screen. And if you want to unpin the screen and go back to the home screen, just press the back button and the recent button together. And now the screen will be unpinned, but your phone will require a pin in order to unlock. So this increases your privacy and prevents your nosy friends from taking a look at your personal stuff. Now take a look at this thing. This is called the assistant menu. If you tap on this, it will display a couple of options. So here we can view our recent apps and go back to the home screen. We have the back button, we have the notification panel drop button and we can also use a cursor just like on, just like on a Windows PC and you can change the volume, increase or decrease the volume and next we have an option for taking screenshots. So you can take a screenshot from right over here, you don't need to slide your finger or press the button combination. So let me show you how to enable this little assistant thing. So first go to settings. Scroll down here to accessibility, tap on dexterity and interaction and then make sure this option called assistant menu is turned on and while you're at it, go ahead and enable assistant plus and this will give you specific options to these applications. So once you enable this, this little white dot will be shown on the screen and you can put this anywhere you like but I kind of like it here because I can then use my phone with my right hand and this gives you certain accessibility options and you can customize them from over here. So if I remove menu settings, I can easily go ahead and add screen rotation or brightness control. And if I open up the assistant menu now, we have a few options which are specific to the camera application. It allows you to switch the camera to the front cam. So that's how you can switch the camera. You don't need to swipe down on the screen. You can also go to the gallery by using this assistant menu and then just tap on home screen to go back to the home screen. Do you guys know there's an advanced picture editor hiding inside the gallery app? So just open the gallery app and open up a picture you want to edit. So let's just open this picture and by default you get these few options here for editing your picture. So we can just rotate the picture from over here. You can add text but it's not that advanced. But if you press these three dots we have an option here called Open in Photo Editor Pro. And Photo Editor Pro gives you more control over your picture. So we can just use this feature called to rotate, flip horizontally, flip, flip vertically. We can change the aspect ratio, change the perspective of the picture. We have the lasso tool to crop certain parts of the picture. Let's go back here. Then we have different effects. These are just filters. And you can change the intensity of the filters if you like. You can download more of them. So let's just select auto. Then we have some decoration tools. We can draw on the pictures, add stickers. So let's just add this one. Let's add it here. Press OK. Then we have some tools here to correct the picture colors and tone. And really my favorite is the spot color. And I can use the S Pen to isolate colors. For example, I want color in this one, this one. But yeah, you get the idea what I'm trying to do here. 
and maybe we want color in the jar and I can also erase some stray color that appeared over here so this just shows you how powerful this photo editor really is and this is the beauty of S Pen you can do some really intricate stuff with it so this is our final result I can go ahead and save this picture press on save and it will be saved as a separate copy the original picture and the saved one the Galaxy Note 9 I have here is a dual SIM phone. So for example, if you're using two SIM cards with two different numbers, you might want to have two different accounts of WhatsApp. Now if this was stock Android, you will not be able to install two copies of the same app on the same phone. But fortunately, Samsung Experience allows us to install two copies of a messenger app. So you can easily install two copies of WhatsApp on this phone with two different accounts running. So for that, go to settings, tap on advanced features, scroll all the way down here and tap on dual messenger. And here we can turn on this option for Snapchat, WhatsApp, and I think some other apps will also support this. But let's try for WhatsApp, tap on install, tap confirm. All right, so second copy of WhatsApp has been installed. Now if I go here in my app list, here is my main WhatsApp and here's the second WhatsApp. So if I open the second app, it will start from scratch and I think you can add three accounts on this phone so one for secure folder and two on the main device whenever you install an app on your galaxy smartphone it kind of converts the app icons into these rounded icons and I don't really like these rounded icons I'm not a huge fan of them fortunately we can disable the rounded icons and have the phone use the standard app icons instead so to do that go to settings tap on display scroll down here and tap on icon frames now let me just use the pop-up window to show you what different difference it makes so now take a look at these three icons snapseed snapchat and vlc right now these icons are displaying a frame so this is the default option which will come on your galaxy smartphone if you tap on icons only you can see that rounded frame will be disabled and these are the regular app icons do you guys know you can combine the mobile data and Wi-Fi to boost download speeds when you download huge files, for example, games of Play Store and Samsung Store? So let me show you how to access that download booster. Go to settings, tap on connections, scroll all the way down and tap on more connection settings. Here we have an option called download booster and turn it on. And you'll see that this Wi-Fi icon changes. So you see we got a little lightning bolt and it shows 4G and Wi-Fi is also connected. So now what this does, it increases the download speeds by combining Wi-Fi and the 4G connection on your phone. So if you download files that are bigger than 30 megabytes from Galaxy Store and the Play Store, for example, games are well above 30 megabytes these days. So that way you will be able to quickly download games. Very useful if you have an unlimited 4G connection. Guys, the Galaxy Note 9 comes with an inbuilt call recorder. To enable the call recorder, just open your phone dialer, tap on these three dots, and tap on settings. Scroll down here to record calls, and make sure auto record calls is turned on. And here you can select to record all numbers. You can select the second option, which will record unknown numbers. And the third option lets you select specific contacts for which the phone will record the call. So the next time you answer a call, you'll have this little recording thing going on and you can actually stop the recording by pressing these three dots and tap on stop recording and now the recording has been saved and you can restart the call recording by pressing these three dots and select record now, and once you're done all the recording will be saved in the internal memory or in the SD card whatever setting you select just like on the Samsung Galaxy S9 and the S9 Plus, the Note 9 also comes with a built-in speech-to-text converter. It is inside the voice recorder, so first, open up the Samsung folder and open up voice recorder. Here, select the third option which says speech-to-text, but first open up the setting and make sure the recording quality is set to maximum. Then tap on this button here and select your native language, but unfortunately for me, English India is not listed, so I'm just going to select English United Kingdom. So let's try this out. Hello, we are just testing out the speech to text converter on the Galaxy Note 9. See, it made a little bit of mistake over there. 
So we are just testing out how many mistakes the speech to text converter can make. On Samsung phones, whenever an application has a notification, the phone will show you a little number here on top of the app icon. Now these are called app badge notifications and if you long press the icon whichever has the notification, you'll see what notifications you have and you can swipe to dismiss if you want. Now you can control the way this works. So just go to settings, tap on notification and tap on app icon badges. And if you want to turn it off, you can completely turn it off. You can see that little number will go away and you won't get any swipe to dismiss notifications. So let's go back here and turn this feature on because I kind of like it, especially with the messenger application. It actually allows you to see who has sent the message and you can change the style the way notifications are displayed on the app icon. So for example, you can have the numbers displayed or you can have just a dot displayed over there. So now you can see there's just a little dot and I'm not sure if you can see it because the background is also red. So I'm just going to place it here. You can see there's a little dot there, but all the other stuff still works. I do like the number option though. And then you can also disable the notification option. If I disable this, if you long press this, you, you will not see the notification. So great way to customize your phone. And I kind of like all of these options turned on. So if I long press this, I'll see the notification and you can dismiss the notification right from over here. You can see it also disappeared from our notification bar. So this is more of a tip rather than a hidden feature. So whenever you take a screenshot on your Galaxy phone, you get a little notification here that says you've taken a screenshot. Now we might want to disable this because it's kind of intrusive, at least for me. Because I know a screenshot has been taken and I don't want the phone to remind me that I've just taken a screenshot. Now obviously if you're not lazy like me, you can just go ahead and swipe this to clear out the notification. But I kind of don't really want that notification to be there so for that I will just long press this and turn off the Samsung capture notifications. Now once I'm done, just press save and next time whenever you take a screenshot, so let's go to Play Store and take a screenshot. You can see the phone no longer sends the notification. Now this just disables the notification. All the other features are still available. So if I take a screenshot, you see that scroll capture option, that drawing option, everything else is still available. But if you would like to get the screenshot notification back, just head over to the settings, tap on notifications and here search for Samsung capture. So here is Samsung capture. Now this is turned on. This is normal. Just tap on Samsung Capture and turn this option on. And now whenever you take a screenshot, it will again display a notification in the notification drop down menu like this. Because the Note 9 has such a big screen, it might be difficult to use the phone with one hand. Now fortunately we have a feature called one handed mode and this is really more of a tip than a hidden feature because almost all phones these days come with one handed mode. But anyways, I'm going to show you how to enable this. So drop down the notification bar and tap on settings and then go to advanced feature and go to one handed mode. Turn this on. Now we have two options here. You can launch the one handed mode by a gesture like this. And if you want to make it full screen again, just tap here once. And the other option is by tapping the home button three times. And if you tap the home button three times, the screen becomes small and you can also place the screen on the left side or you can have it on the right side and if you want to make it full screen again just tap here and the phone will be much more easier to operate using one hand guys this was my list of the hidden features i could find on the galaxy note 9 also do check out the 30 features tips and tricks video for the note 9 link is down in the video description so i hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video as much as i enjoyed filming it so thank you for tuning in if you found the video helpful please press the like button and subscribe also, find me on Instagram and on Facebook. All the social media links are down in the video description. So, I'll see you guys next time.